This is the Memory Palace, a fantastic new exhibition here at the V&A in London. Everything you see around me started life as a work of fiction by author Hari Kunzru about a post-apocalyptic dystopian London. The text was then given to a group of artists, illustrators and graphic designers who were tasked with translating the novella into an art exhibition. When we were researching the fields of graphics and illustration and really trying to engage with um, themes and, and really pertinent themes in those subject areas, it became clear that um, everyone at the uh, graphic designers and illustrators are all kind of engaging with the idea of what's happening to the book and the book is moving off, off pages and into, into different realms and different platforms. So um, that felt like a very key kind of pertinent theme to look at. Memory Palace is an excellent example of a new trend in contemporary art storytelling. Right now at the Royal Academy, Grayson Perry is wowing visitors with this tapestry cycle entitled The Vanity of Small Differences, which is inspired by Hogarth's series of paintings, The Rake's Progress. One of our most popular video artists, Bill Viola, makes films that narrate the joy and pain of the human condition, and clearly owe a debt to old masters such as Giovanni Bellini, who painted religious altarpieces. The Memory Palace too shows the influence of religious storytelling. It was actually in the um, interpretations that all of the different practitioners um, created that this, this very um, strong kind of Christ-like figure, but indeed these sort of religious references came up. And indeed when the architect came back and proposed um, to create the, the exhibition design for the show and suggested this kind of cathedral-like space that have these little chapels that contain individual artworks, it was again kind of reiterated that, that kind of issue, but it also felt totally um, right for, for the this project. Until recently, storytelling had fallen out of fashion. From Kandinsky to Rothko, modernists believed the path to truth lay inward. Abstract mysteries and mute minimalism ruled. By the time Damien Hirst pickled his shark, it looked as if short, sharp, essentially silent shocks would have the last word. So why is storytelling back in vogue? I guess um, perhaps people are um, you could say, in our quite dark times at the moment, this idea of escapism and storytelling is very, very important. I mean, it's kind of apparent in all of our um, t you know, TV series that we're watching, kind of Game of Thrones and all these things. It's very kind of into um, serious kind of storytelling and escapism in many different forms. Charles Avery is a contemporary artist originally from the Isle of Mull, whose entire oeuvre is devoted to life on an imaginary island. Entitled The Islanders, it's extremely complex, with characters and plots to rival any fantasy fiction. So what inspires him? Daumier, people who draw um, in that way. I've always been very attracted to people who have got a strong sense of line. You know, Pablo Picasso's very early drawing, you know, his, uh, stuff he did in the 1890s even, and uh, um, Egon Schiele and people like that was when I was very, very young. Um, but you know, also like I say, like Asterix and uh, <laughs> Asterix and uh, and Tintin. I always find that stuff very great. And then much uh, kind of more recently, I suppose that I've taken a lot of inspiration from film and from television, um, and particularly from these epic uh, narratives that you have, like The Wire and The Sopranos, um, which for me is, is is the most comparable thing that's been attempted culturally and where I take definitely take most inspiration from. I just love the characters, I, I love the textural portrayal and, and it created a kind of three-dimensional space as opposed to this linear, this linear narrative. My drawings, they have a, a sense of implied continuation beyond the end of the drawings. You know, you can inhabit the characters, you might speculate as to what they're going to go and do, what's happening beyond the drawings. That most prescient of writers, Walter Benjamin, believed that the end of our oral tradition, from which, of course, storytelling sprang, spelt the death knell for memory itself. Fortunately, artists like Charles Avery are here to bridge the gap. I, I was a very poor reader. I think I only learned to read when I was about eight. Um, there's a great verbal tradition, certainly, in the, in the Western Isles, um, and uh, something that I, 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 was, I was always attracted to. There was an old man who lived at the end of our village, and he must have been 90 or something. Was, anyway, to me, he was extremely old. And uh, he was able to recount, he couldn't read or write, but he had this amazing crystal clear memory. And he was able to recite the whole, so my mum asked him what was happening in the news, he was able to recite the whole 
half hour bulletin age 90 from you know, <laughs> ad verbatim. Of course, some of the most powerful stories in art have turned on one single image. Who can look at Tracy Amin's unmade bed without thinking? What happened here? And what will happen next? Rachel Spence, Financial Times, London.